to the height. And this is using my practice finger that is from a red iguana. And I actually showed you a little bit more of like the box of caveman things in this video, more so than when I used it in the past. And I keep it in this little box because it keeps it somewhat clean because the silicone is like a dust magnet and I live in a house with two cats that explode fur so keeping it as you know dust free as possible is kind of a priority so you get to see that finger it also another thing just for using the practice finger is it's really hard <laughs> to get forms to stick to it so that's the other note but this nail is an extreme geode all done with acrylic so I hope you guys love it as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to see my future videos as well. I know you it! <laughs> So I'm going to begin and I'm going to make an extra long nail form. So I cut off the extension portion of one form and I stuck it onto the very tip of another nail form, which makes it a super, super long form option. And then I'm going to add the little sticky part to the underside of the part that goes right underneath the free edge of the natural nail to give it some support. Pinch this all together. And then here is my practice finger. Like I said, I've been keeping it in the little box and then I'm going to push a nail tip into the practice finger one that fits because you want it to fit really, 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 really snug so that it doesn't wiggle around or move on you. Then I'm going to fit my form to this nail. And like I said, it will not stick to the silicone. So I have used some tape in the past in order to get them to actually stick because it just wants to pop right off, which doesn't work as you're in the middle of sculpting something and then your form falls off. It's very discouraging. But now to start this design, I'm going to begin by extending the free edge of what we're going to call our natural nail with some clear acrylic. And then I'm going to take some more of that clear acrylic and dip it into some clear mylar flakes to begin the middle of each geode and I'm just sort of figuring out where each geode is going to be at this point because I don't yet have a very exact plan so I'm just going to place some down in where I think the middle of each geode could very well be so this is kind of a, a guess at this particular juncture so now that I have all of those done, I'm going to just encapsulate the mylar flakes so that they stay relatively clear. I don't want any of my other colors of acrylic to kind of stain them, I guess you could say. So just a little bit of clear around them so that they have some protection is what we're doing. And then I'm going to sculpt the nail bed of this nail with some cover pink. Since I am going to be doing a smile line on this particular design, I want to sculpt my smile line in at this point as well and just get it nice and sharp and clean. I'm going to use my cover pink all the way up. I love this color of cover pink. It's one of my absolute favorites. It's Koopa's cover pink, and it is the one that I'm pretty sure I will be using for the rest of my career because it is just so wonderful to use, and it is such a pretty, very, I think it's a very universal color. I've used it on a bunch of different skin tones, and it always looks lovely. It kind of adapts and just goes with everything. So I'm going to file my smile line into shape with my hand file, and then I'm going to begin sculpting each of my little my little geodes. So the first one I'm going to do is going to be purple. Purple is a personal favorite, so I had to begin there. And I've got three different colors of each, uh, three different shades of each color that I'm using. So I've got a pastel type color, and then I have a dark color, and then I have one that's sort of a medium tone and sparkly for each of these. So for my purple, for my medium tone sparkly one, that's the one I used first that I went around my mylar flakes. And then the next color I'm using is a darker color. And I'm going to put links. So any of the colors that I'm using here that are from Double Dip, I'll link in the description box below. And most of them are the, um, the reason I'm not linking some of the other colors that I use, and I did mention that Koopa one that's cover pink, but a lot of the other colors I'm using here are the only other colors I'm using are actually from Koopa. And I'm not sharing those because I don't overly love them. So I'm not going to ever recommend a product to people that I don't think is is good or is worth the money. And I really, I always used to be a Koopa person and I you know, loved Koopa. And then they changed instead of having their, uh, they had art acrylic and they were called artfinity powders. And I loved those and I still have some. And those are discontinued now because they switched over to their triptych powders, which are a three in one. And I'm not nearly as big of a fan of them for working with as acrylic. So that's why I'm not, that's why I don't like them. And I know that some people are, are, you know, wish that I would link all the products that I used. And anytime I'm going to, I do a product that I am very uh, for, and I would love to promote just for the use of it, because it's fantastic. I will tell you guys, I will shout it from the rooftops. So I am going to put all of the doubled up colors that I used in the description box below, because those ones I really do enjoy working with. But the Koopa ones, if there's some colors that seem like they're missing, that is where they are from. So now for the next geode I'm going to be using, I'm going to do basically the same process as my purple one, 
continuing circles of my pink tones, starting out with my kind of medium tone, bright one. And then I also use some silver glitter throughout each of the geodes just to bring in some sparkle here and there. And when you're doing this, they don't all have to necessarily stay within the same color family. So you could do one that's pink and then fades into blue, or you can, I mean, you can have so much fun with it. And there's so many different, if you look up watercolor agate, or agate slices, you'll find so many beautiful paintings of, of a gate. And the reason I say to look up paintings of them instead of actually just looking up the pieces of rock is because the paintings seem to just be a little bit more clear on the way that the rings look. And so when you're trying to replicate it for art, you might just find some more inspiration from looking at art instead of actually what it is. And I find that with other things too, that I'll look up different painting styles just to get some inspiration. So now for the last one that I'm going to be doing, it's going to be the blue one. And each time I'm making, I'm sculpting a geode, I'm making them slightly smaller as they go down the tip of the nail. So the purple one is going to be by far the largest, the pink one, the middle size, and then the blue one, the smallest at the tip. And I am not worrying about the shape of the free edge here. Whatever the gate slice tells me to sculpt is what I'm going to be sculpting. So it's going to be very uneven and um, I'm trying, I am trying to keep it kind of balanced as far as left to right. So the purple one leans heavily down on the right side of it. And then the pink one is going to lean down more on the left side just to try to keep it balanced that way. But otherwise I'm pretty much just sort of going with the flow. And now I'm going to be encapsulating each of these little slices with some clear acrylic, trying to make them nice and strong and just smooth them out, especially around where the mylar flakes are. There's some unevenness and the, the height of the different colors changes a little bit. So you don't necessarily want that. You want this to be a nice, smooth, finished nail. So we're just going to kind of finish those off with some clear acrylic to make sure that they are going to be nice and secure. Plus, this nail would not have been at all strong without having this encapsulation because the layers of acrylic I did in those rings is very, very thin. And so if you don't encapsulate it, it's not going to hold up possibly even for taking off the form. Uh, I always like to leave my form on as long as possible because I've had it before when I've been sculpting something and it's all been very thin and then I've taken off the nail form and broken my extension as I'm removing the form and that's no fun for anybody. So now after you have this nail completely encapsulated and it is nice and strong, you're going to want to file it into shape with your e-file. And as you're doing this, just kind of take your time and go over it. And you can also use that e-file to clean up the free edge shape if you want to. A regular hand file won't get in those grooves very easily, but an e-file can. And now I'm going to start outlining all of my geodes and the smile line with some black gel paint. So this black gel paint I'm using is going to be sticky enough, or not sticky enough, but smooth enough at the end to grab some chrome powder. So that's the reason we're using gel paint versus just acrylic paint or like the acrylic craft paint I typically like to use for these things because that won't hold chrome powder and we want this to hold some chrome powder. So the gel paint is going to be the perfect curing texture so that you don't have to worry about top coating it and doing more than one more than one layer to all of these little outlines. Just go through and add the outlines to each one kind of going down. I think that adds a really nice separation and also gives it a bit more of that stone look because a lot of times the agate slices have a brown tone or kind of a golden brown uh, natural stone finish on the edge or unfinished stone on the edge. So after you have all of that black gel paint uh, done, cure it and then burnish some gold chrome powder over the top of all of the gold or all of the black and it's going to just really look very elegant and very very rich and very just extra I don't know fancy I suppose so just really burnish that in and after that's all done then you can take a brush and remove any extra chrome powder it should stick to the raw acrylic very much and if it does at all you can just take and clean it up with a little bit of acetone on a brush and after that's all cleaned up, then you're going to take some white gel paint and add some highlights inside your slices. So this is actually my favorite step because I think it adds so much realism to these slices. So you're just going to take and it's a very small amount of white gel paint that I'm using. You're just going to kind of lay it down and kind of follow the lines of some of the rings that are inside the slices and just very delicately fill in just some extra highlights on the rings. And I'm gonna do that in each one. They don't even have to go all the way around in a full circle for the ring. If you wanna just highlight one side of it, you can do that too. And this is another place where looking at some art is a great way to get some inspiration for how these rings may possibly look. Or, you know, looking at an actual agate slice. I know I have a couple, I have some coasters that 
are purple agate slices that I absolutely adore. So I get inspiration everywhere. But then after you have those, then you're going to want to add some shading with some black gel paint, mostly along the outside edge by that gold line. Just a little bit. It's going to add a lot of depth if you add just a very small hint of black in in your geodes here and there. It's just going to kind of bring in some of that richness of the color. And if you're using your black gel paint and you're finding that it's too pigmented and it's not blending on very well and it's leaving heavy black lines, you may want to dilute your black gel paint with some gel top coat slightly just so that it's not quite as intense. Or use black gel polish too would be another option versus the gel paint. So just keep blending those little bits of color in. And I'm using a little... Um, it's an oval shader brush to do this, and that's giving really nice, soft lines for the black and the white details inside each one. So then after those are done, I'm going to apply some jewelry gel to the center of each slice. And this is, I would say, a completely optional step. I like the way it looks with and without, and I couldn't decide. So if you wanna skip this particular step, go ahead, but then apply some glossy gel sealer over the whole design, and you can really see the slices just come to life and that gold looks so beautiful. I love the whole effect. But then if you do decide to, if you're going to press some rhinestones in, press some clear rhinestones, three or four, just kind of switch it up to the center of each of the, of the geodes using, like I said, clear, because you want the color to show through them. And so I have some that don't have the foil backing on them. So that the color underneath does pop through. And that just gives the center of each one just a little bit of texture. So that is it. I absolutely love this design. I have always really loved the geo trend. And I know I've done a different one a long time ago in the past that was more of a 3D extreme geode. And I can put a link to that in the description box below if you are curious. So if you want to check that out and I will see you guys next time. Bye.